Hi, Billy Glisson with PowerCore 360. Today I'm going to show you three ways to prevent volleyball hitting related injuries to the shoulder and back. So today we're going to work on proper positioning of the shoulder and spine, strength and flexibility exercises, and the use of whole body rotational hitting mechanics. So when we're looking at the shoulder complex itself, uh, I just want to give you a good visual of kind of what's happening as we take the elbow. If we were just lifting the arm up and we took the elbow up to shoulder level, I want to give you a good visual of kind of what's happening. So this is the scapula, this is the shoulder joint, this is the humerus, this long bone here. And what I want you to notice is this piece of yellow tubing is representing what a muscle part of the rotator cuff, the top part of it, called the supraspinatus. And what can happen is that arm raises up, is this bone when it comes up here can actually start to pinch off this opening or shut down this opening where the supraspinatus comes out and it actually attaches to the humerus. So in this case, if I continue, if she continues to lift her elbow up above shoulder level, we actually can pinch that area off. And oftentimes that might be referred to with volleyball players who get, quote, a hot shoulder and inflamed shoulder, they get anterior superior impingement. What that means is, anterior meaning the front of the shoulder, superior meaning the top, they can get pain, inflammation on the top and front part of their shoulder. And oftentimes it's just a function of how high they're lifting their elbow. If we lift the elbow higher than shoulder level, then that can tend to impinge there. So when we're hitting, and if we have her take just solely an arm swing that starts with her arm in front of her body, and she lifts a straight arm up to go ahead and swing, and she raises it way up, we can get into that same position to where we're impinging on that supraspinatus or the other tissues that might be there. If she swings a lot like that, mechanically that can put stress once again on the supraspinatus or other tissues there, cause inflammation. Down the road we can get bone spurs that get created on the bottom of the shoulder, top of the humeral head and that joint, and it can actually fray on that part of the rotator cuff, the supraspinatus. That can create significant problems and lead to surgery. So the first thing we have to do to prevent the pain and injury and problems to this shoulder joint is once again, we have to fix the position of where the shoulder is, the postural position of the shoulder blade. So when we, she pulls back into that good position, the muscles on the back side of the shoulder blade pull the scapula back down flat against the rib cage. That changes the position of the shoulder joint itself. Now when she raises the arm up to go to swing, we actually have more room to get the, the uh, arm up in that position and not pinch off the supraspinatus or the other muscles or other tissues that might get impinged or pinched in that area. So to prevent injuries to the shoulder and back, the first thing we're going to look at is the position, postural position of the shoulders and back. Uh, we're going to pretend Nicole here is a high school or a club or a middle school player. And if I walk in and I look as a coach and I see the typical posture for a high school or middle schooler with the shoulders rounded forward, the back kind of rounded forward in kind of this C curve position, uh, then that's the first thing I need to understand is her shoulder and her back or her spine are really in a bad position and so I want to improve that. Um, what I'd like to do is cue her posturally to where if I was looking from the side view, if I could draw up a straight line from her ear, that line ought to go from her ear through her shoulder and through her hip joint. That's what we're looking for, but once again, for a lot of high school athletes or middle school athletes and even some collegiate athletes, we walk in and we see this. Heads forward, shoulders rounded forward, and the back kind of takes on this C shape. We want to avoid that. We need to correct that. Okay, so we're going to look at a healthy shoulder complex as she actually goes through the movements of a right-handed arm swing. So go ahead and perform your motion, Nicole. And really what we're doing here is the first thing we're showing is just as, as she gets prepared to hit the ball, her shoulders are actually turning and they're preparing. And what's good about this to help prevent injuries to the shoulders, we're not just using the muscles of the shoulder, we're actually using the muscles of the core to rotate. That's going to help us generate more arm speed and actually help us tolerate that. Go ahead and continue. What I want you to see happen is as she comes up into this position, what's happening with her right shoulder blade is as she comes up to this position, the muscles underneath the shoulder blade and down below it are actually shortening, contracting, and they are pulling the shoulder blade or the scapula, if you would, down flat against the rib cage. 
That's extremely important that, that that happens. So she comes back and her arm comes up, the shoulder blade's actually getting pulled down against her rib cage. Okay, so now we're gonna show the typical middle school, high school, or even college athlete whose shoulders are rounded forward, we've got, she's slumped in her back, we've got this C curve going on, so we're not in the ideal postural position. So as she, now she starts to go through her arm swing and starts to try to turn her shoulders back around and stops right there, you can actually see the right shoulder blade is actually winged out. It's not been pulled down flat against the shoulder, uh, against the rib cage. And in fact, when I do that, when she makes the good correction, her spine starts to correct. She gets more upright and the, and the uh, shoulder blade should come down against the rib cage there. So hunch for me once again. This is what you have to watch out for for your kids who are rounded shouldered and rounded back as they come into this position. We've already shown what happens to the shoulder blade. In this position, it actually gets winged and gets tipped. It creates problems here, it creates pain, it can create injury in the shoulder. And the real fix is then an exercise that will allow her to do the proper strength and conditioning and movement pattern. So as she's sitting upright, the right exercise that will allow her actually to go into her arm swing and make her scapula get pulled down against her rib cage. So for the first exercise, we're gonna work on the turn of her thoracic spine, her T-spine if you would, but we're actually gonna integrate or combine the motion of the right scapula as she would go into her hitting motion. So what I'm gonna ask her to do is actually start in this position where she's turned to her left, the arms out in front. The first thing I'm gonna ask her to do is take her right scap, pull it down against her rib cage, nice, and then tuck her elbow into her side, and now then it's all thoracic spine or shoulder turn, if you would. And that's the motion. We're gonna just let that go, unwind it, rotate forward, and same thing. Scapula down, we're gonna rotate back around, and we're just gonna rep that. So we'll do four, five, six more. Very good. So this same exercise, before we were really working on her going through, go ahead and continue that. So we're gonna work on the rib cage, pulling the scapula down against the rib cage as she integrates the turn of her shoulders. That's all really good as we prep, as like her arm was coming up to swing, but there's other benefits from this exercise. As she goes here, and actually her shoulders turn through here and arm gets pulled out in front, what happens is the shoulder and the turn of the spine are actually gonna help slow the arm down, decelerate it. Most injuries, or a lot of injuries, I should say, to the shoulders in hitting a volleyball actually can happen as the arm's slowing down or, or being decelerated. So, but if we don't work on the deceleration motion, we're not gonna condition the muscles around the rib cage, the spine, and the shoulder blade to slow the arm down. So let's continue that motion. We know what happens back here as we turn back, but as the shoulders turn forward and the arm goes forward like that, basically what we're doing is using all the muscles of the spine and around the, the scapula to help slow the arm down. So go ahead and do a couple more. So we're working on what's called eccentric stretching or lengthening of these muscles around the spine, around the shoulder blade as the arm comes forward. We're working on strengthening those as those muscles lengthen. Okay, so I'm gonna show a little more advanced progression to this exercise. She's gonna start rotated like she's hit the ball forwards. Shoulders are turned to the left. First motion is to take the scapula, pull it down against her rib cage, tuck her elbow into her side, and rotate her shoulders back to me. Okay, now we're gonna bring the arm up into the arm slot and go through a throwing motion going forwards. It's the same motion, we're gonna start pulling the scap down, tuck the elbow into the side, rotate around, come into the slot. So it's more advanced that we're actually getting our arm up into a hitting position. And as we go here, we're slowing down over here. As we come back, we're working on the scapula. As we go forward, we're working on the muscles of the spine and of her shoulder blades and arms helping to slow the arm down as it comes forward, working on the eccentric phase of that. If you like this video, make sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up down below. If you're interested in PowerCore 360 products, go to PowerCore360.com.